So I'm here with Nate. Got that right, right? Absolutely, Nate Mitchell. And Nate, what do you do with Oculus? I am VP of product. I'm one of the co-founders. I do a lot of product engineering on the Rift and the Oculus SDK. So you're the right guy to ask these questions about Oculus then? I am one of the right people to ask questions about Oculus. In a short couple of minutes, maybe one, maybe less than that, yeah. give us a brief history of Oculus and how you guys came to be. <laughs> that's a, that's good luck. A, it's a really good story, but I'm going to give you the very short version. Palmer Lucky invented the device. He was a working out of his parents' garage in Long Beach, California. Really interested in head-mounted displays, VR, and over the course of two and a half years, he developed what we now call the Oculus Rift. At that same time, this is a very abbreviated version, he connected with John Carmack, now Oculus CTO, former um, CTO of id. So they connected on the internet, actually, and John started experimenting with the Rift, the prototype that Palmer had built. Just gaff tape, duct tape, you know, ski goggles attached to it, crazy. So John takes the Rift to E3, and actually it getting, ends up getting nominated for best hardware at E3, losing to the Wii U. This was E3 2012. So right around that time, actually I connected with Palmer, a couple of the other guys, the CEO of Oculus, Brendan and Reed, Michael Antonov, the chief software architect. We all met Palmer, and we ended up sort of joining forces to build what now you know here is Oculus and the Oculus Rift. So the last part of this story, we launched a Kickstarter in August of last year. We were actually at PAX last year promoting it. And we launched a Kickstarter for the Oculus Rift development kit, a tool for game developers to build games for the Oculus Rift consumer version. We raised $2.4 million. We're now a team of 40 people. And we're building the consumer rip, trying to build the VR that we've always dreamed about since we were kids. Yeah, we were just talking about that in the 90s, we're putting on the, the stupid, crazy headgear. The, the, the hardware that we uh, got to check out earlier, yes. Um, is this, I know it's, it's in test phase right now, is it going to change much from what we see? Is it going to get smaller, larger? I mean, what do you think? It's going to change quite a bit. Oh, really? Yes. I, for the, I know, I know, but for the better, I assume. All for the better. I mean, we can't go into all the details, but I think if you've tried the original Rift development kit and you're here at the show trying the 1080p prototype, you'll definitely be like, wow, this is a major improvement, both in form factor, weight, uh, the resolution. And this is just the tiniest little glimpse behind the scenes into what we're working on for the consumer version of the Rift. We haven't announced a lot of the stuff that we're doing, and we've got a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. So people just need to stick with us, and more will be revealed as we go. What were some of, some of the problems that you guys had to overcome in the very beginning of the process? In which part? I mean, like, like in this, right now in this stage of the process, I would say. You know, I think the biggest challenge, one of the biggest challenges right now is actually just working with developers to get great content on the platform. It's sort of a cop-out answer because it's not like something that we're battling with VR. But for VR to really be great, we need developers to make made for VR games. And what we're seeing right now, and actually what we're showing at the show, is Hawken and iRacing, which are two incredible ports to VR. But that's, they're just that, they're ports. And what we need to see is developers targeting virtual reality addressing its strengths and weaknesses to build the best possible experiences. An example we give all the time is the best games on iOS aren't necessarily like, you know, the ports of console games with virtual joysticks and, and that sort of thing. It's just games that take the device and leverage all of its strengths and its weaknesses like Words with Friends or Angry Birds. Like those are fun games because they're designed for the hardware and the interface. We need that in VR. And a great example of that is Eve Valkyrie, which was announced last week. It's actually the first, we think, made for VR game done by a real, you know, like a AAA studio, CCP. And it's just a remarkable showcase of what the tech can do. Now we could see what the tech can do with games. Are there any interest in applications other than games, like simulators or actual real life applications, say uh, remote control aircraft flying, uh, drones, things like that? Yes, it's another super long answer. I could talk about all this stuff at length for a long time. We're seeing developers, so to get a Rift Dev Kit, you don't have to be a game developer. You go to our website, if you're a, in film, sports, research, architecture, simulation, training, whatever it is, you can buy a Dev Kit, the SDK is right there, you can grab that, and you can start building whatever you want. We've seen people do incredible things. There's, um, it's being used a lot in the education space, exploring are there ways to teach kids in VR that are more interesting and engaging than necessarily even standard video game computer interactions for education. Uh, PTSD treatment is another great one. You know, for PTSD treatment, you're often trying to recreate the event that you know triggered the PTSD. Virtual reality is basically the ultimate medium for that, right? Because you can recreate the event in a way that tricks the brain into thinking that it's real. That way, it's so compelling that uh, you know the people 
the people who experience the PTSD can actually see major improvements over time. So we're seeing developers do incredible things across basically every industry you can imagine. And our, pa we're, our passion is games. You know, we're game developers. And we're trying to build the best possible hardware for games because we want immersive gaming to happen, VR gaming. But we think a lot of developers can do amazing things just branching off of that work, and that's what we're seeing. So to wrap this up, what's the, the potential timeline here? I know you said you're going to go through some more changes, and I know you may not be able to give, deliver too many specifics. However, what's a general timeline to say when a gamer here at PAX would be able to hook this up at home and really uh, immerse themselves in an incredible experience? We haven't announced the release date for the consumer version yet. It's something we're working on. All I can say is that what we generally say is it's months, not years away. And so this is something gamers should be excited about in the near term. It's a really good time to be a gamer. You've got next-gen consoles. You've got incredible mobile experiences. Mobile hardware is going through the roof. Micro consoles like the Ouya or even not sort of in between that, you've got the Tegra or uh, the Shield, the NVIDIA Shield. And then all of that's happening. You've got VR, and VR gaming is going to take off in a huge way, we really, really believe, in the next couple of years. And AR gaming is going to follow closely behind that. So right now is the best possible time to be a gamer. The Rift is something, VR is something that gamers today should be excited about in the near term. This isn't something that a decade from now we'll chat again and you'll be, you know. I'll be like, when is it coming? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, this is something that's coming, you know, in the near term. We've got something that we think is great now, but it can be so much better and give us a little bit of time. Awesome. Well, Nate from Oculus, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for coming by.